Life on Earth has nearly been wiped out five different times. Five different mass extinctions that eliminated 75% of all species or more. But some scientists believe that the sixth mass extinction is happening right now. In this video, we'll explore the five different times life nearly ended, the numbers behind today's extinction crisis, and what we can do about it. Because this time, saving the planet starts and ends with us. Look, it's Earth, floating in an endless void of space. It's so peaceful, isn't it? Just a small blue marble orbiting around a warm star that gives rise to life itself. But peace is fragile. All it takes is one event and everything changes. Earth may seem calm now, but it survived unimaginable disasters. Not once, not twice, but five different times. Volcanoes, climate shifts, asteroid impacts. Nature has a terrifying imagination. What will cause the next one? Or maybe it's already happening because some scientists believe we're not waiting for the sixth extinction. We're living in it. It began in the oceans. Back then, almost all life lived underwater, but suddenly, Earth got cold. Very cold. Glaciers began to grow, pulling carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, out of the atmosphere. Without it, Earth's natural heat vanished. An ice age began. Sea levels plunged, shallow marine habitats disappeared. 85% of life completely gone. The second mass extinction wasn't sudden. It was a slow collapse. The trigger was algae. Excess nutrients poured into the oceans, causing a massive growth of algae. And when the algae died, microbes decomposed them, sucking up the oxygen in the water. Oceans turned into dead zones, and around 75% of all species vanished. The third mass extinction event is nicknamed the Great Dying. The worst extinction event in Earth's history. It began with massive volcanic eruptions in Siberia. Lava stretched across continents and filled the air with carbon dioxide. The result was runaway global warming. Oceans lost 67% of their oxygen, and acid rain killed all of the plants. 90% of all of life completely erased. Another volcanic nightmare. As the supercontinent of Pangaea broke apart, massive rifts opened up in Earth's crust. Volcanoes spewed out CO2, destabilizing the climate once again. 75% of all species vanished. The one we all know. An asteroid the size of Mount Everest smashed into Earth at 45,000 miles per hour. The impact unleashed tsunamis, global wildfires, and a sky-darkening cloud of dust. 75% of all species dead. But for the very first time, humans are a part of the equation. I could discuss all the possible ways that the sixth extinction could happen. An asteroid strike, a supervolcano erupting, a global pandemic, nuclear warfare, these are all possibilities. But for this part, 
I'm gonna try to convince you that the sixth mass extinction is already happening. So what is a mass extinction? Scientists define it as a period when at least 75% of species on Earth go extinct in a relatively short span of geological time, usually less than 2.8 million years. That might sound long, but in Earth's 4.5 billion year history, it's a blink of an eye. And this is a very important point. Mass extinctions don't happen overnight or even throughout a century. They occur slowly throughout millions of years. Now let's get to the depressing evidence. So why do scientists believe that we are currently going through the sixth mass extinction? One of the main reasons is simply how quickly species are going extinct. Let's understand this better. There is something called the background extinction rate, which measures the normal rate of extinction Earth has had over its entire lifetime, not including mass extinctions. And the estimate is around 0.1 to 2 extinctions per 1 million species per year. So every year, for every 1 million species on Earth, roughly 0.1 to 2 of them go extinct every year. Now, let's compare this background extinction rate to the extinction rate that we are experiencing today. This study really puts things into perspective. They state, for vertebrate species, which are fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, the average loss over the last century is up to 100 times higher than the background rate. They also stated that, even assuming that the background extinction rate is very high, the number of species that have gone extinct in the last century would have taken between 800 and 10,000 years to disappear. Now, this study was from 2015, and some of you might argue that this info might be outdated. But here's another study from 2022 which demonstrates the same thing. The authors said, Hence our estimates of 150,000 to 260,000 extinctions of all species during the roughly 500 years since 1500, among roughly 2 million species, equates to a background extinction rate of 150 to 260. This means that for every 1 million species on Earth, 150 to 260 of them are expected to go extinct each year. This number is far greater than the normal background extinction rate of 0.1 to 2, and the rate of species going extinct is still accelerating. At this point, I understood that the extinction rate we are experiencing today is hundreds to thousands times faster than the normal background extinction rate. But I was curious, how does our current extinction rate compare to the extinction rate of the previous five mass extinctions? And this is what I found. Studies suggest that the maximum extinction rate at the time of the big five mass extinctions would range anywhere from about 10 extinctions per million species per year to around 1,000. That means our current rate of 150 to 260 extinctions per million species per year is already within the range of past mass extinction events. So here's a question. Why are our current extinction rates so high? Here are some of the main reasons. Habitat destruction. Over 75% of Earth's land that's not covered in ice has already been altered by humans. Climate change. We're heating the planet through burning fossil fuels. This causes rising temperatures, shifting weather patterns, and more natural disasters. Pollution. Toxic chemicals, plastics, pesticides, oil spills, light, and noise. Overexploitation. Overfishing, poaching, and illegal wildfire trade, commercial hunting and logging devastates fragile ecosystems. Invasive species, which we accidentally contribute to. Invasive plants, animals, and microbes disrupt native food webs and bring new diseases across the globe. So we didn't set out to cause a mass extinction, but if we don't change course, that's exactly where we're headed. What do we do? 
Okay, so we might be in the middle of a mass extinction. That's just awesome, isn't it? But here's the truth. You're not powerless. In fact, real change can start with you. We've spent a long time pointing fingers at the government and corporations, and sure, they absolutely play a massive role, but waiting for them to fix it, that is how we got here. It's time to take matters into our own hands, because when enough people change, systems change. So here's three different steps, real things that you can start doing today that actually make a difference. Eat less meat, especially beef. Livestock is one of the biggest drivers of deforestation, methane emissions, and water use. So if you can cut down, you probably should. Use your wallet like a vote. Every purchase sends a message. So try supporting companies that do care about our planet. Talk about it. Most people don't realize how serious this is. So start the conversation. Share what you've learned, post about it, talk to friends, family, coworkers. Change can spread through culture as well as politics. The sixth mass extinction isn't just some distant event. It's unfolding around us. But remember, we're not helpless bystanders, we're participants. And if our species has helped cause it, we can help stop it.